This is the chapter five, final review for Math 2 and Honors Math 2. So for number 21, we're given a regular eight-sided polygon. So we know it has eight sides. We know all sides are the same, which means also all angles are the same. We first need to find the sum of the interior angles. Our rule for the sum of the interior angles is n minus two times 180. So we do eight minus two times 180, or six times 180 to get 1,080. Now, one interior angle is gonna be 1,080 divided by how many angles we have, because that's the total and we know it's equal pieces. So that divided by eight is 135 degrees. Now we go over to B and it's asking for the sum of the exterior. The sum of the exterior is always 360, regardless of the number of sides. Now, one exterior is going to be 360 divided by the number of sides, or number of angles, which is 8, which gives us 45 degrees. Now, the last thing to note here is these two angles add up to 180, and they always will, because if this interior is 135, the exterior 45 fits as the polygon is formed, that relationship is there. So what actually I could have done is solved this, Subtract it from 180 to get the exterior and then multiply it by how many I had or some connection to there between them. They don't have to be separate. They are related between the two. So uh, next we have to draw a sketch and state all of the characteristics for our various shapes. So I'm going to start kind of at the top of our hierarchy. The first thing we did was a parallelogram. The parallelogram has opposite sides parallel. It has opposite sides congruent, it has opposite angles congruent, it has consecutive angles supplementary, and then the last one is that diagonals bisect each other. Then the next one down is we can look at a rectangle. Now a rectangle is a parallelogram that has special properties. It has four right angles. Now those four right angles also congruent angles. You could say either way, 90 degrees or they're just congruent. And it also has diagonals congruent. Now, uh, anything that works for a parallelogram also works for a rectangle, but it's these properties that qualify it to be a rectangle. Uh, we can also go look at a rhombus, which is a type of parallelogram. It is a type of parallelogram, this time with four congruent sides, or all sides congruent. Um, we also have that the diagonals bisect opposite angles, which means when I have a diagonal, these angles are bisected. Now, because I also know they are congruent, it actually means all these little parts are congruent as well. And then the last one is that the diagonals are perpendicular. Now, a square is the combination of a rhombus and a rectangle. It has four congruent sides and four congruent angles. In order for it to be a square, it has to have something from the rectangle and the rhombus category. It doesn't have to necessarily be the angles and the sides per se. You could also have diagonals congruent and maybe diagonals perpendicular and it would follow a square, but it has to have something from each of those. Uh, a trapezoid has one pair of parallel sides, and those are opposite sides obviously, um, we do have consecutive angles supplementary, but it's these two and these two. It's not a cross. Um, if it was an isosceles trapezoid, we would then have properties about diagonals being congruent, but that doesn't apply here. So one pair of parallel sides is a trapezoid. Uh, maybe you go mid-segment. There's a mid-segment formula where it's the average of the bases, but I'd stick with that property. Uh, last one is a kite. We didn't do much with kite. We just need to know, first off, that it has two sets of consecutive congruent angles. 
not congruent angles, congruent sides. Um, that would be these two and these two, and that means not opposite sides, because if it was opposite sides, it would be a rhombus, but they are consecutive sides. Uh, diagonals are also perpendicular in a kite. It also has one set of angles congruent, the ones between uh, the con congruent sides. Okay, now we are on 23. On 23, I know that these two angles are congruent, so I'm gonna go 2x equals 114. Divide by two and I get 57 for x. I know that these two angles, 3y and 114, have to add to 180 because they are supplementary. So I first subtract 114 from 180. So we get 3y equals 66. Divide by three and we get 22. For number 24, we know that ADC is 50 degrees. That means, since it's a, a diagonal's bisect the angles, that both of these are 25. So if we need to find angle here, BAC, we can kind of break this apart. Because anytime I see a rhombus, I actually think of it as four right triangles. And they're right triangles that kind of share sides that you could reflect around. So like these being 25 makes these also 25. So I take that triangle I'm looking at, which is B, A, no letter, which is the right angle. I have 25 here. I need to find this angle. Well, if it's in a right triangle, I know 90 is accounted for. There's 90 left between these two. 90 minus 25 is 65. So the measure of angle BAC is 65 degrees. Uh, for 25, we need to find all the other angles. This is an isosceles trapezoid, so I know those two legs are congruent. That tells me that base angles are congruent. So N would be 115 degrees. Uh, L and O, I know they're the same. What's going to help me is these two are supplementary because they are same side interior angles being parallel sides. So we do 180 minus 115. We get 65, which is angle L and angle O. Now onto our proof, 26 through 29. We have a parallelogram is given. AB is parallel to CD, right here, and also BC is parallel to DA. So now we're looking at angles 1 and 4, 3 and 2. Well, if 1 and 4 are congruent and I have parallel sides, I'm probably looking at alternate interior angles because typically in proofs, whenever we see parallel sides and looking at angles after that, the alternate interior or corresponding seem to show up. These are alternate interior. Now, three and two, also the same thing. They worked for us here. So we're gonna call it uh, D because they are alternate interior angles. Next up, AC congruent to AC. This is the shared side that is congruent. That is reflexive property. So that one's gone and that one's gone. Uh, now our two triangles are congruent. If our two triangles are congruent, I'm looking for the triangle congruence reasons, which is angle, side, angle, and side, side, side. We look at our picture, I have two sets of angles and the side in between, which makes me think angle, side, angle. Um, it, you gotta be careful not to go side, side, side here. Yes, we did mention the sides here, but mentioning the sides parallel, parallel is not congruent. We can't mix those two up. Parallel does not tell us they're the exact same length or the exact same size. It just says they don't intersect. Parallel really led to these angles. All right, last part. I have triangle congruence and I need to show that the two uh, parts are congruent. They are corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we're going to go with B and that is CPCTC abbreviated. On to number 30. For number 30, I want to start with angles with the ABC. I know that 70 and B are the same because they're opposite angles in a parallelogram. So B is 70 degrees. I know that A and C are also the same, but I first need to use the fact they're supplementary and do 180 minus 70 to get 110 for A and C. Now we look at our um, sides. So opposite sides are congruent, tells me 3X minus 10 equals Y 
and 51 equals 2x plus 4y. So we don't have just equations with x or y by themselves in it. We need to uh, kind of solve. I like to use substitution. So I'm going to take this term y here is equal to 3x minus 10 and substitute it into the other equation. 51 equals 2x plus 4 times 3x minus 10. This becomes 12x minus 40. And by cleaning it up, I got 14x minus 40. Which gives me, add over, we got 91 equals 14x. When I divide, that comes out to be x is about, in the calculator, I got 6.5 or 13 over 2 when it's reduced. So that's x. Either one of those, the same value, one's a fraction, one being a decimal. Now we need to substitute that back in up here to find y. So I'm going to go 3 times 13 over 2 minus 10 equals y. That gives me 39 over 2 minus 10. Uh, leaving this in fractional form, I can go 20 over 2. And y comes out to be 19 over 2, or that would be 9.5. So 19 over 2, or 9.5, depending on how, how it's written. In number 31, we need to find angles. So I'm going to redraw this one and find all my parts, and then we can fill it in. I think this one kind of gets tough, depending on the order you want to solve it. So let's go draw a rectangle and angle 2 right here is 65 degrees now in a rectangle we know they're all uh, 90 degrees for all the right angles so this would be 25 degrees we also know that um, opposite angles are congruent and we have diagonals congruent so these match up so it starts to look like a bunch of little isosceles triangles. If this is 65, I have 65 here. If this was 25, I have 25 there. 90 degrees leaves it at 65, makes that 25. Isosceles again, and I have the rest of those. Now, I need to find the inside angles. Well, let's just treat it like an isosceles triangle. 25 and 25 is 50. From 180 gives me 130 left over, which is here. Same thing would occur down here, so this is also 130, or vertical angles. Now I can either go the supplementary route, which makes this 50, or 65 and 65 is 130, which 180 minus 130 is 50 degrees. So now I have them all filled in. So angle one turned out to be 50, 3 was 65, 4 was 130, 5 was 25, 6 was 130, 7 was 25, 8 was 25, and 9 was 65. So our last problem here is going to be plotting these points for a parallelogram. Okay, I need to find the coordinates of the fourth point. Now, there's actually three different options we can have here. Um, two of them kind of go off the graph, so let's take the most common one. I'm looking, I'm expecting it to be somewhere, somewhere around here. I'm just kind of looking ways I could figure out, fill out the parallelogram. So what I look at here is I went up five over one, or I went down five left one to get from here to here. Now that parallel side. I want the same idea. So I'm going to go down 5, left 1. And in doing so, I can now draw in my sides. Oh, missed. Close enough. So now at 3, negative 2, I have my point. And if I need to verify it, 
I can look at the slopes to show the opposite sides are parallel. I could do distance formula to show uh, the opposite sides are congruent. I could also use the midpoint formula to show that the diagonals bisect each other. Slope is pretty quick. I would probably look there first. Uh, from A to B, I went up 5 over 1, so that's a slope of 5. Then the slope from D to C in this case was up 5 over 1, so they both were the same, so AB was parallel to DC. The slope from B to C, I went up 1 over